<laughs> I've been training with Master Ming for almost 12 years now, and most of that time has been seven days a week. I came into this particular Kung Fu family um, really looking for a sense, of, a sense of place in the world, a sense of purpose. And to understand kind of my, my motivation or, or where I'm coming from, you have to understand a little bit about my family history. I know my, my parents have spoken um, earlier, but my mom had eight miscarriages. My brother and I were the only two that lived. Um, so knowing that growing up, that's always been a question, why did I survive? Why not one of the others? So there was always this unconscious yearning to, to find a place that I belong, to find what I'm supposed to be doing. So it was very easy for me to get dissatisfied with things because this is wasting my time, this isn't why I'm here. Um, so I was challenged in school because I could get the idea pretty quickly, I hated busy work. So I would get the idea of the concepts in math, for example, but I wouldn't do the homework, so my grades suffered. Or I would get the point of certain exercises, but I didn't do the homework. And of course, high school, a big part of your grade is doing the homework, which I considered beneath me, it was busy work. And that really was a wrong attitude. Um, it's my own ego that, that caused me problems. So I graduated, um, I didn't have the, uh, the interest to go to college, I didn't know what I was looking for. Um, I didn't want to waste my parents' money just sitting around trying to try things and go, well, I don't know what I'm here for. So uh, my parents rule, either you're in college or you're working. And so I got a job and I actually ended up in a sandpaper factory for three years. And about a year and a half into that, uh, I got burnt out. And I was pretty much sick of living. Um, I was working 40 hours a week. I was watching about 60 hours a week of television. I was living at home. I wasn't learning anything. I wasn't growing. It was just a grind to get through the day. I hated going to bed at night because it meant I had to get up to go to work in the morning. And it was right around that time, one of my best friends, a guy named David Rowe, uh, we started looking around different schools in town. And we actually visited pretty much every school in Dayton back in 95. And we just asked a couple little questions, watched the way they did their class, and I didn't find any place that I was interested in. Um, but we came to Ming's Martial Arts, and this was before the museum was there, this is before uh, Master Ming had really started doing a lot of the research into the Wing Chun history that he's done. And in the office, it was Master Ming, his wife, we called Simo. And he asked me a simple question, or gave me a simple challenge, which was, don't believe me. Try and prove me wrong. I've spent my life studying this. What can you do? And that simple challenge, that quiet confidence to say, look, I know what I'm doing. Um, you think you could do better, try and prove it caught me off guard a little bit because he wasn't bragging, he wasn't saying, oh, I'm so-and-so and I have such a big punch or such a big kick or I've studied with all these masters. He just said, this is what we do. And that got me interested. So I enrolled, took the trial. And in the school manual, I read about what it means to be a disciple. It's someone who focuses their life on, on mastering something to preserve it, pass it on to the next generation. It's something I identified with very deeply. And Within that first week, I made the decision, yeah, this is what I need to be doing. I've always been interested in martial arts ever since I was a kid. Um, but for whatever reason, I never studied. And when I started when I did, it truly was something on my own. I paid for it all myself. Um, I drove myself. So it was really something that I did for me, all by myself. And the things I wanted to get out of it, discipline, focus, confidence, courage, strength, power, the ability to hurt people, I wanted all, everything. And over time, as those individual pieces were developed, I could put that aside and focus deeper and see more how things connect, how things plug together. So that's really been my personal journey into the martial arts, why I got involved and why I continue to stay involved. Um, you know, now as I teach, I learn so much from my students. By seeing what I know through their eyes, it's like I see it new for the first time. And as we continue to do research into the martial arts, and that opened up a whole new world. Because prior to that, there were certain things I couldn't explain. It would be just, well, that's what they do, and that would work for them, this is what we do, and it works for us. But after I see how all martial arts plug together, I could see where people are getting caught up in different things which create styles. And so it's really understanding what the human body can do, what the human mind can do, what the human spirit could do. We're unlimited potential. We create our own limitations.
So how do we get free? Well, there's a process, there's a method, there's a way to do it. And that's really everything that I've come to realize and come to experience for myself um, through my Sifu, through Master Ming. And I owe him my life. Uh, my parents gave me my life. My Sifu gave me my purpose. Um, so for me, this is, uh, you know, what the students have said tonight is really is this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so it gives me a, a, an energy and a passion I would never have had anywhere else. And I've worked sandpaper, I've worked uh, renaissance festivals, I've done security work, I've been in the military, I've done corporate work, I've done volunteer work, I've done all kinds of things. And, and nothing has really resonated with me so much as what we offer here through Ming's Martial Arts.